Former President Obama marking the approaching 10th anniversary of the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary, Connecticut, last night, calling the massacre the most bitter disappointment of his presidency because of the lack of a change in gun policy. So I will admit it. I still get angry every time I read about the latest senseless shooting, whether it is in a church or a synagogue, in a grocery store or on a college campus or in a home or on a city street. I still feel anger, and I hope you do too. Joining me now, Democratic Senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy, who serves on the Appropriations and Foreign Relations Committees, and of course, is so closely connected and identified with the gun law that was passed this year and with the Sandy Hook families who were the hosts of last night's event, the Sandy Hook Promise. Um, Senator, you know, Sandy Hook happened right after you were elected to the Senate. You've dedicated yourself to fighting gun violence. I'm going to ask you, of course, about the defense appropriation, uh, rather, the authorization bill. But I just wanted to ask you about this last night, because we all remember Barack Obama. He was crying in the press room that day over the loss of those children. And, you know, when is it ever going to be time to do something more? You've done as much as anyone could do in a bipartisan fashion. Now that you've got 51 votes, will it be any easier? Well, I mean, listen, I remember Barack Obama being in Newtown the weekend after the tragedy. We all gathered at the high school. Um, the event, which was televised nationally, ended up starting, I think, almost an hour too late because President Obama spent time with every single family um, and um, made sure that their voices were heard by the President of the United States. Um, you know, we all thought that everything was going to change uh, after December 2012. We thought that the country was going to wake up and change our gun laws. That's not what happened. Uh, but President Obama figured out what I figured out soon thereafter, that we had to build an anti-gun violence movement that one day would be as strong, if not stronger, than the gun lobby, the gun industry. That has happened now. Uh, today, the anti-gun violence movement, um, Sandy Hook Promise is part of that movement, is stronger than the gun industry. And that's why this summer we were able to pass the first significant legislation changing our gun laws in 30 years. I just got a briefing, Andrea, from the FBI a week ago, and they showed me lives that have already been saved by that law as it's being implemented. Um, 51 votes in the Senate certainly uh, helps, um, but uh, ultimately, you know, we'll probably need a few more elections. Um, to bring some more gun sense champions to the House and to the Senate. But next year, we'll be right back at it, trying to pass expanded background checks, controls on assault weapons. And I think you're entering an era in which we're going to change uh, the laws uh, to try to align those laws with where the American people want our gun laws to be. Thank you for that. Your analysis is so important. You've been part of every compromise so far. Uh, I want to ask you, of course, about the the final version of the defense authorization bill released by the House, because it rescinds the mandatory COVID-19 vaccine for the military, which was opposed by uh, some conservative Republican senators, largely. Uh, they say it's hurting you know, getting the volunteer army, you know, geared up, recruitment. But there's so many vaccine mandates already for people in the military. They serve in close quarters. We've seen already on a carrier last two years ago, maybe. What happened when COVID went, you know, through the whole carrier? They they couldn't. They had to stop operations out in the Far East. How do you justify this? Should the president sign it? Well, the first question is, you know, going to be whether it has the votes in the uh, House and the Senate. This is an enormous bill. Uh, I'm reviewing it as we speak. I'm very disappointed by this provision. We still have you know, 250 plus people dying every single day in this country from COVID. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, um, we have always required vaccinations uh, to be uh, part of the U.S. military, going all the way back to George Washington, who was concerned about smallpox breaking out in the military. We have um, had vaccination policy. And the damage here is not you know, just to the health and the safety of the military. It's to the public writ large, because um, as this attack on vaccinations continues 
to build legitimacy finds its way into major public policy acts, then it's going to be harder to hold together all of the other vaccination requirements we have in this country. All of a sudden, we're going to um, uh, start moving backwards in terms of the number of polio and measles and rubella vaccinations in this country. You're going to have outbreaks in our schools once again. And so um, this is a big bill. We're all going to have to make a tough decision about how we vote. But I am very worried about this broadside attack on vaccines and public policy. It's not just about the military. It's ultimately about our kids. Uh, and this could um, you know, get, get worse for our kids very, very quickly. And now, speaking of Ukraine also, there have been these strikes now the last couple of days into Russia, within Russia. Ukraine is not taking responsibility. Nobody is uh, saying who's done it. It would seem likely that it was from Ukraine. Uh, Secretary of State now says that the U.S. has neither encouraged nor enabled Ukraine to carry out attacks inside Russia. Do you see this as a shift in the war and is Ukraine pushing the envelope by going so far if it is, in fact, Ukraine? Uh, Andrea, I haven't been briefed on those attacks, and so I have no information to share as to uh, who's responsible. Um, as you mentioned, uh, our policy is clear. We have been uh, very willing, uh, enthusiastic in supporting Ukraine's defense of its own territory. Um, we have made clear to the Russians that there are lines the United States is not going to cross right now. We're not sending our own troops into Ukraine, and we are not providing encouragement to Ukraine to launch attacks into Russia. But, um, you know, this is a war. Uh, and I think it is, at some level, hard to expect Ukraine to you know, fight it with one hand tied behind their back. I don't know if these attacks are um, the responsibility it should be attributed to the Ukrainians. But what I know is, you know, war often happens on both sides of borders. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you so much.